All right, guys, big news at the shack. I now have the most powerful laser that has ever entered this building, CO2 or otherwise. I've got it in, got it installed, up and running, and I've been using it for about a week and a half. And the machine that we're talking about is the Atom Stack A70, and I've got it over here in the enclosure, and we're gonna go through uh, the assembly and everything. If you're thinking about getting one of these guys, I've, I've had a pretty long history with Atom Stack, and so far, I've been really impressed uh, with their machines. I, currently, my two of my three main machines that I run regularly uh, are Atom Stack. So uh, yeah, let's get around and uh, let's go over what we got. All right, guys, so like I said, we're gonna walk through the assembly, uh, getting this thing set up. But before we do that, I'm just gonna kind of show you the enclosure, how I've got mine set up here uh, to give you some ideas and things to think about. And I'm also, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna try to put some more links as they are available uh, to my buddy, Steve. You know, hey, say, say, say hey, Steve. Steve says, hey. Uh, but I'm gonna put some links to Steve's videos down in the description, and guys, if, if you're not familiar, Steve puts these little heads of me in his shop, and so that's that's kind of my payback, because I've got I've, I've now got Steve on a stick, so I can pretty much you know if I need Steve to help me with a video, I can you know I just got him, but anyway, go let him go let Steve know that uh, you know hashtag Steve on a stick or something like that, but anyway, the enclosure. I wound up redoing this enclosure, guys. When I redid my portable shack, uh, I got myself available a little bit more uh, larger piece of acrylic. So I took and CNC'd the door to make a bigger window. I like it, especially with this machine being the size that it is. I think it just looks pretty clean. But I'm gonna move you over here and kind of show you the machine. Uh, the assembly's not that difficult, but I wanna save that to the end uh, because if you, if you don't have the machine or you're not anticipating purchasing the machine, that's not something you care about. So we're gonna put that at the end so I don't run all you guys off with the boredom of watching me put a machine together. So let's move over here and I'll kind of walk you through the features of the machine, what I like about it, and the, the things that maybe I'm not all that crazy about. So let's move over. I have somewhat altered the machine from its factory configuration and I'm gonna try to get the camera where you can see in here a little better. Uh, I did take the, the shroud off, and that's a personal preference thing. Safety-wise, guys, leave them on. I take them off because where I'm sitting over here trying to frame, a lot of times I can't see the dot. Now, this machine does come with the crosshairs. Uh, it has the red crosshair. You'd have to set up the crosshair offset. Uh, that is something that you can use if, if you like the red crosshairs. Me, personally, I'm not that crazy about it because... And this is why I'll explain. Uh, I know there are people that like them, and I know from Adam Stack's perspective, there are people that would not buy this machine without that red crosshair. But the issue that I have with using the red crosshair, I'm gonna go ahead and power the machine up. There's a plus for you right there, guys. It could be a disadvantage. Uh, I have left the machine on overnight a couple of times because you can't hear it running. It has It makes zero noises when it's on, the only indicator that it is powered on is the lights and the little framing laser right there comes on. But back to the reason that I'm not really keen on using uh, these red crosshair lasers. In order to use this, you have to set up the Z offset. And I have calculated this one and figured it out because it wasn't really well pointed out in the book what the Z offset was, unless, you know, maybe there's a video that I didn't watch. Uh, but when you do that, Basically, you frame using this, but then you burn using the laser. And when you do that, whatever that offset is, you lose that on your work area. Uh, because just like with this, I can't frame all the way to the edge of the work area with the crosshairs because it's on this side of the module. It's not, it's not coming through the same hole as the laser diode does. So whichever side the laser is on, you're gonna lose like with this one, I think I've got it set to 19 millimeters, I think is what it wound up being. Let me confirm that. But you're gonna lose that little bit of workspace. And guys, I know that is splitting hairs, uh, but at the same time, this machine is 500 by 400 millimeters, and uh, I don't really wanna give up any of my millimeters. 
So <laughs> I want to keep it 500 by 400. And by, by changing that and using that, that pointer, I lose that. The offset that I've got it set is 19 on the X and Y uh, is four. So basically 19 millimeters is gonna be rendered useless because just because you can frame using the red crosshair all the way over here in the black area, the laser can't reach that far. So it also can cause problems when you're cutting and so forth. So I'm not a fan, some of you may be, and if you're accustomed to it and you're used to it and that little 19 millimeters of lost work area is not a big deal, then, you know, great. Uh, but it is an option for you if you want to use it. Mine has gotten a little dusty and I didn't clean it on purpose because I didn't want y'all to think I just got this thing out of the box. I have been using it. It is very dusty. Uh, I've been cutting a lot of projects this week. Since I found out that this guy dominates stuff like half inch material now three quarter inch material especially oak that's going to be a bit of a challenge uh this stuff i'm cutting i'm cutting this uh 4.5 millimeter material i'm cutting it at speeds that's faster than my p2 can do so you know comparing this to a 55 watt co2 this thing cuts faster than the 55 watt co2 does half inch plywood cuts it like butter uh six millimeters a second one pass and i get a clean drop I have been cutting brackets for my CNC to mount my CNC to the table. I redid my new portable clack shack this week. I used some of this uh, half inch material to secure a machine onto my portable clack shack that I use when I go to events. And it's faster than setting the CNC up and I don't have to worry about hold downs with the laser. So I was, I was headed over to the laser or the CNC to cut these things out and I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I can do it faster with the laser on small things, especially because I got no hold downs to deal with. The only disadvantage, of course, is going to be you're going to get some soot around the edge. But for the application that I've been making the brackets and stuff, that wasn't a concern. I wiped them off, put them on there and go with it. I actually like the black because people can tell it's been cut with a laser, which is cool. Now, the major upgrades that I've noticed with this machine from some of the others, uh, you'll see the belts here. These belts are a lot more robust. The X40, uh, a lot of the other machines that Atomstack makes uses the little, the, the, the thinner belts. And I'm not gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say quarter inch, but I know they're probably not quarter inch, it's probably metric. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're almost 10 millimeters. They're like probably nine millimeter wide. So these are su substantially stronger belts than what you usually see on diodes. Uh, they have went to this, uh, this little rail system, which other machines have used in the past, uh, it more or less has a stainless steel rod that is embedded into the chassis of the machine. And these got these stainless steel rollers that roll on that rod. One of the benefits of that with the Atom Stack, some of the previous Atom Stacks, and I still have some of them that I use, they had the, uh, the nylon or rubber uh, wheels with the concentric nuts. The problem with those guys are they can get flat spots on them, they can wear, they can get thinner, uh, causing, you know, causing a little variations and maybe causing some issues with everything moving smoothly and not having slack in it. With these, you know, stainless steel on stainless steel, especially with it just rolling and it's not, it's, it's not using these wheels to propel, the wear on those should be very limited as long as you keep them clean, free of debris and stuff like that. Because if you start getting debris filled up in these little grooves on the wheels, you could start seeing a situation to where it would be too tight or too much tension because there would be a space between the, the, the roller and the pin that it rides on. So that's something that you're gonna wanna make sure you do is wipe these down and clean these little wheels thoroughly uh, when you're using it. Uh, another big upgrade is guys, other than the thumb drive, they, they, they almost had me, but they stuck the thumb drive straight up in the air right here, which you do not have to have this in here to operate the machine. I leave it with the machines just because that's where all the files and stuff that come with the machines are in case I need those. Uh, they did move all the power and output plugs to the right side so that they're not up in the way. Uh, with an enclosure like I've got, it does make it easier to get those guys uh, out of the way, out of sight, so it looks cleaner especially from up here because everything is below the lip on the, the enclosure. Now, 500 by 400 work area, the bigger belts, 
70 watt switchable to 35 watt that's 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 a big deal 70 watts of power is a big deal to me now when i first got the machine and got it set up in light burn it's this machine does have autofocus and let me get a piece of material but you can do it two ways you can set it up in light burn to where you have a micro and i'll try to remember to put what that micro is but it's in the book so when you get the book with the machine if you'll follow the book even though they don't send you a light burn config file with the machine it's relatively easy and i may even try to share out my light burn configuration file down below so that if you don't want to go through the steps of setting the light burn up for this specific machine and you want to run settings that i'm using uh, feel free to to download that and use it to install your machine but the way you can do it, you can do it one of two ways. You can either hit the button here on the machine, on the, on the front of the chassis right here. It's gonna raise it up, it's gonna find zero up top, and then it's gonna come back down. It's gonna touch off the material and it's gonna set to zero. Home the machine first, set the focus, run the job. I use a park location to where the laser head moves to the back corner of that workspace. Put your other next piece of material in there, hit start. You don't have to home after each job if you set it up properly. Uh, using a park location or a go-to after the finish after the burns finished and there's a setting in light burn for that also and I have a video on where that can be found but if you're getting this machine and you download my light burn file it'll already be set that way uh, cable management they did a great job on cable management uh, it comes with the drag chains already on both axes uh, the clearance some of these machines have a little bit of problem with clearance from here to the workspace this one does have the drag chains underneath the gantry. Keep in mind, this module is probably going to be the lowest part of the machine. Uh, it travels all the way from zero to 40 millimeters. So it'll actually only come up 40 millimeters off of the bed. So that's probably going to be about the thickness of material that you're going to be using with this machine without raising it up, adding legs, putting blocks under it, or having a recess uh, in your enclosure. Uh, but I did, it came with a, 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 a good Atom Stack, their newer uh, air assist pump, but I don't use those pumps here in the shop. Uh, my air compressor is outside. I have shop air, and what I have done is I have myself basically in my setup, you'll see it right here. I have a, a, a solenoid that controls the air that's operated by the machine. The 12 volt output that normally would go to the pump goes over to the solenoid and turns the air off and on. I've ran that, I've been running that on my X40 since I got it. I'm running my shop air and I'm having really, really good results uh, with speeds. Here are some of the speed tests that I've been doing. And guys, I went way too slow on the engrave. All right, <laughs> way too slow. Uh, I did this before, uh, this was done, these were done with the factory air assist before I put it in my enclosure. Uh, I did those right here on the table. And you can see this is, I don't know if you can tell or not, but that's almost recessed almost half the thickness of this four and a half millimeter material, which is a little extreme. But for you guys that like to do epoxy inlays, <laughs> congratulations, there's plenty of room to throw some epoxy in that little hole there. So uh, if you're wanting to do epoxy relay, uh, inlays and you need a really deep engrave, this guy will do it and it will do it quick because it went almost halfway through this material a uh, hundred percent output at 225 and you've got at least a millimeter deep uh, recess right there at 225 speed and that's millimeters per second uh, as far as the cutting uh, four and a half millimeter material you can see these different tests i tried different tests i tried playing with the focus you know add a couple of millimeters down raise it a couple millimeters up all those different things just to see if it made a difference uh, it seems that the beam on this machine uh, the focal length is kind of forgiving. So even though you may get just a little bit faster cut if you lower the uh, Z-axis during that layer, it's, it's not required uh, unless you're going really insanely thick like something like the half inch material. On the half inch material, I did drop the Z-axis five millimeters on the cut layer so that it would drop down into the material some before cutting. And that's another plus with this machine, guys. Before this machine, I'd only found one other machine that I liked the way the Z-axis works. And this one, I believe, actually works better than the other one that I had. All you have to do on your layers, once you zero uh, the material, 
you have to make sure in light burn you have relative Z moves only activated and you can just add to the layer, you know, plus two, minus two, whatever the case may be. And when it gets to that layer, the module will adjust either plus two, minus two, however you set it before that layer. So if you're doing an engrave and you want to follow that up with a cut, or if you're cutting some really thick material and you want to do one pass at surface and then one pass halfway through the material, with this machine, you do have the capability of addressing the depths for the different layers using light burn and it works great so far haven't had any problems with it the one hang up that me and steve have discovered with this machine when you're assembling the machine and i'm going to try to make sure i mention this in the assembly the one thing that you want to do is when you're setting the zero on the module it's got on the side back here it's got a little gauge when you're zero in the module and putting the module on there if you do not have the surface that the module's touching when it activates the, the, the limit switch, if you do not have it even with the feet or really, really close, what will end up happening is you'll home with the machine, send it out, and when you tell it to, uh, to focus, it's going to come down and it's going to act as though it's focusing, and when it comes back up, it's going to throw an error, uh, and it's going to be a hard limit stop error, and it's always going to happen as the module comes back up to the top. What's happening is because you've improperly mounted the module on there, when the thing touches the bottom, it has a predetermined distance that is set in the computer uh, that it's going to try to come up. And if it hits that limit switch before a certain point, it causes that error. And we figured that out accidentally because when we're putting them together, I put mine together on a flat table. Steve put a honeycomb under his and assembled his. The thickness of that honeycomb was causing a problem and he got that error over and over. But once we figured out it was what the error was, we figured out what was causing it. Steve simply loosened the module using the uh, little screws, lowered it down, got it to where it needed to be, tightened it back up and it works. So be mindful if you get, after hitting the autofocus, if you get a, a hard stop error as the module comes back to the top, just check how you've got this calibrated as far as the movement. Uh, it does have a zero and a 40. Uh, when, the, when the little the arrow back here is on zero, it should be touching the surface below the legs or the, whatever it's sitting on. So put the module on, on a flat tabletop and calibrate it to the table. Should be good. Just don't put nothing else under there. But the other things, guys, like I said, other than it's an Atom Stack, it works great with light burn. No compatibility issues with light burn. I haven't found one thing really that I don't like about it other than I wish while we were adding switches and Atom Stack, if you're, if you're watching, please. We could have added a little tiny switch. It could be a recess switch that you had to have a toothpick to reach through a hole and flip or flip it the other way to turn off the red pointer laser. I don't use it. Uh, I don't want to cut wires. I don't want to remove anything. It would be really nice if we could have just put a little recessed switch, little little small dip switch or something over on this side or on the back or somewhere so that I could cut that off if I didn't want to use it. Other than that, I can't find a complaint with it, guys. Uh, the power supply, I will tell you, is going to be a little bulkier than what you're used to. The external power supply for this thing is a 36-volt, 24-volt power supply. It looks more like a CNC controller than it does a power supply for a laser. It is a little bulkier. The amp draw on this is probably going to be a little bit bigger. I'm still running it on a 15-amp circuit uh, using a battery backup with no issues. But the machine actually has a 30 uh, 36, 24, and a 12 volt circuits in it. It has two input cables that are uh, 36 and 24 volts that come into the machine, and then it has a 12 volt that comes out of the machine and goes to the air assist. So there's a whole bunch of different circuits on this machine. They did label the connectors, the plug ins that plug into the uh, module so that you know which one goes where. But as a precaution, again, looking down the road as these little labels come loose and stuff like that, it would have been really nice if we could have either color-coded them or maybe even went an extra step and changed the dimensions of those two plugs so that you couldn't inadvertently plug 
the wrong cord into the wrong hole because that would be bad if you put the 36 volts in the 24 volt slot. So when you're putting your machine together, powering it up, make absolutely sure the cable mark 36 volts goes into the 36 volt hole and the 24 goes into the 24 volt hole. That's the only things I can really ding them on, guys. Uh, that, and, and those are small, I know. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, the belt tension, I will tell you this, this thing's finicky with belt tension. Because the module is as heavy as it is, you'll have a tendency to over-tighten the belts. I did when I first put it together. I tensioned the belts too much, and it just wasn't running smooth. I did a few tests with it, and I couldn't quite get it figured out. But once I realized that if I did the 45 tilt test without the module on there, uh, I got a lot better results. But like I said, as a recommendation, I would take the module off, do the 45 tilt test with the module off. You want to get it to where the, 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 the gantry can move. It's just, it may actually be a little bit past 45 with this machine, but you don't, if you put the machine on there, that added weight seems to cause uh, the belts to be way over tightened because it's trying to hold back the weight of the module. So when putting it together, I, I would start that way. If you have problems with them being too loose, uh, then you can slowly tension them and, and test it that way. But I wound up taking the module back off of mine to fine tune the belt tension. And I've got it doing a really good job. It's cutting perfect circles. Everything's connecting, lines look good. I don't have any egg shapes or you know squares that aren't square. So, so far everything's working well. Another thing, guys, this one's bring your own zip ties. Uh, the cabling and stuff up here, they didn't include any zip ties with this build, but most of us have them laying around. Uh, so get yourself some little six inch zip ties uh, to be able to you know, tidy up some of the wiring on the module here mostly. Uh, that's really the only part that you're gonna need to put this thing together. Assembly was surprisingly easy, and we're gonna bounce over to that right quick and just kind of walk you through it. All right, guys, so basically all the four corners of this thing are going to be pretty much put together. Uh, the cabling and everything's already attached to it. There's multiple screws that go into these legs. With this being a heavier machine, uh, it does require a little more over-engineering. So they put an abundance of screws in the corners. Uh, you got screws that come in from left to right and some that come in from front to back. Uh, so there's going to be lots of screws to put in there. Uh, but once you get those in, the gantry, like I said, it's mostly assembled, just like this is the way it come out of the box. It just sits on there, lines up. Now, you, you, you're going to have to get it, you're going to have to get it exactly right. They machined it. The tolerances are very tight. Once you get it right, it'll kind of fall into that little track right there. There's a couple of screws that connect it onto the rollers. And once you get it connected to the rollers, uh, just make sure that uh, <clears throat> you've got the machine, you know, squared up really good. But I... I tested this machine between putting the legs on and all that. The way they've got it machined, I don't really see how you can get it out of square, but I'm sure somebody will figure it out. Uh, the belts, uh, the tensioners, you also have to mount them to the gantry there. That's what I was doing was running the belts through the tensioners and just getting them prepped to be put on later. The book, I pretty much just followed the book, step one, step two, step three. The screws are all packaged. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the screws are all packaged uh, to tell you what step, you know, they are to do. Uh, I followed along with the book. And like I said, most everything was relatively easy to do. Uh, putting the uh, belts on there, you just got to loosen those guys. And then you're going to connect them. And I just kind of roll them a little bit to jump them onto the pulley. That way I don't have to loosen them quite as far. Uh, then you've got a little timing linkage here in the middle, uh, which is cool. It's not off to the side. It's in the middle on this machine. So you're going to want to make sure that both of them are tracking evenly. Uh, once you've got both sides tracking evenly and everything seems to be right, then you just tension up those little uh, set screws there in that connector, and that's going to sync up the sides uh, so that they're uh, both traveling exactly the same distance. Uh, there's kind of the 45 test, and you can see it was a little it, it was a little quick. So then I go in there and I put the module on, and this is where <laughs> this is where I, I, I over tensioned the belts a little bit. So we're going to cut through some of this video uh, and, and just, just know that by having the module on there, once I got everything together, it was a little snug. And uh, so I wound up having to unplug the module, take that guy back off of there uh, and readjust the belts. They were, you know, with doing it without the module, they're probably going to be just a, maybe a touch 
uh, looser than what you want them, but it's easy enough to just go around and turn the screws, you know, quarter of a turn, test it, quarter of a turn, test it until you get it to where it is exactly to your liking. Uh, but yeah, the, the assembly guys is, is relatively quick. The rest of this is just putting wires into the little clips and everything that they put on there for cable retention. And then I added a few of my own zip ties just because I didn't like the little messy bun look uh, of the wires coming out the top of the uh, module. But yeah, that's basically the setup as far as the build goes. All right, guys, over to the computer. I didn't have a pre-configured file, so I just go into the device manager. I uh, located the port, which showed the uh, laser was connected to the port. Once I found that, went over into Lightburn and just going to create manually. Uh, just going to go in and create it as a GRBL machine. Next, USB. Next, uh, then I'm going to name it Atom Stack A70. And now you're just going to go over here and set the 500 by 400 workspace requirements. And then we'll hit next. Front left corner is going to be the home location. I also like to disable auto startup or auto home at startup. And then just hit finish and uh, you're good to go. Once you create that machine, all you'll have to do is switch over to that profile. Make sure that you have the appropriate port selected. You should see where the machine starts communicating with light burn. And then you should be connected and be ready to start making some smoke. So it's that easy, guys. Like I said, for such a big, bulky machine uh, with all these added features and stuff, the assembly was not bad at all. All right, guys. So if you're interested in the A70, I will be dropping links down below. And as I said, Adam Stack sent me the machine. Those will be affiliate links. But it just kind of helps to encourage them that next time they get a cool product, they send it over here and let me play with it, try it out, and uh, let you, go, you guys uh, know what the machine's all about. So I hope the video was helpful to you. I'm going to try, like I said, I tried to touch on everything, but never fear, guys. You can always go over to Steve's channel, this guy, over at Ventari's Workshop, and you can check out some of his content. He has the same machine as I do. Uh, Steve's a lot more into the nuts and bolts, the, the technical stuff of the machines. Uh, so any, hopefully anything that I missed, Steve can fill in the blanks for you. And uh, maybe between the two of us, you, you'll know everything you need to know about the machine. But so far, guys, it's working like a champ. It is the workhorse. You can see I have went through the trouble of mounting it in my enclosure. And for those of y'all that watch the channel for a while, you know that once you see a machine go into this enclosure, I consider it to be a good machine. I consider it to be a dependable machine because these three enclosures right here make the majority of the money that I do. Yes, I have CO2s. I have other machines. I use those occasionally, but the three machines, the three diode machines that are on my main line right here, I use weekly. And I don't put things in here that I don't like, and I don't put things in here that I don't think is going to last or just going to tear up on me. But anyway, guys, go check out Steve's videos. I'll try to drop all the links available down below for you to check those out. And uh, till next time, be safe. Have a good day.